beautiful souls. Welcome to this energy update for August 2023. My name is Ona Christie, visionary artist in Mystic Oracle. And today I'm going to share with you uh, some insights about the energies of August 2023, looking at uh, some Akasha guidance that I've received, as well as a spirit animal guide that has come forward for this month. We'll also be looking at some astrological events that are affecting energies of this month. And stay tuned for the end because I'll be drawing a shaman wisdom card for um, to help support us through this time. All right, so let's start with the Akashic downloads. And so when I first tuned into the energy of August 2023, these are the words that came through. And he said the energy of August 2023 is like a steel blade. It is the energy of revolution, determination, hope, abundance, and fierce love. It is an all or die energy. Think sword. So right away, it just feels really, really intense. And I asked some more questions about how this might be playing out, both, both positively and negatively. But before we go into that, let's look at the astrology um, of, of August 2023 because I think that gives us some clues. And so I'm not going to go deep into the astrology because there's a lot of very talented astrologers on YouTube who will take you there. But I just want to go through a few of the major things that jumped out at me when I looked at what was happening. Okay. And so before even any specific astrological event, I wanted to just kind of point out that we are starting a new year according to the galactic calendar. And this is uh, the year of the white overtone wizard. August corresponds to about the first full month of the galactic calendar. And so it has that initiating kind of energy. And it's going to be where this energy of the year gets started and it kind of sets the tone for the rest of the year. And so I feel like uh, some of these energies that are coming forward for the year are, are going to be very tangible in August. Okay, so we're working with tone five, which is the overtone, and that is as numerologically, it's a number often associated with great change. But in this passage here, they're saying that tone five is the principle of center, which animates the world of form. All radiance anime emanates from a center point. Every individual, it's a key word there, has a personal center, a place of strength, and stillness in the core of one's being, a place of autonomy and authenticity, an inner sphere of fearless, egoless self-love. The center connects us to the earth center and to the core of the Milky Way and to the spiritual heart of creation. Living from a communion with this center establishes a holistic connection between our inner and outer world, bringing an overtone of empowerment to all we do. Okay, and so what I'm getting is that five, the number five and the overtone resonance, the overtone energy really has a lot to do with heart center and radiating from the heart. Okay, so I'm going to read to you briefly a little bit about this uh, white overtone wizard archetype that we're working with this year. I may um, expand a little bit later on in the video um, and go deeper into what it means. Um, but for now, the galactic frequency this year calls us to embody and emanate our own ray of the sacred. Now is the time to breathe life force into the unique sparks of magic encoded in your soul. How is the divine inspired to incarnate through you on planet Earth? Overtone Wizard directs root to your center, to your heart knowing to your sovereign connection to the living mystery. Claim your voice, your authenticity, your influence, your spirit. If you notice, it's talking a lot about individuality and sovereignty, right? And to coming into one's, what's called the I in esoteric circles, right? Um, being one's own individual self within this wholeness that we're in. Okay, so right off the bat, we're looking at kind of stepping into autonomy and 
being able to hold one's own energy and to, you know, step forward and sing from your heart center um, and, and, and kind of holding your own space, standing on your own square. Okay, and so let's look at a few other things, uh, astrological events that are affecting August and see how that works in with this white overtone wizard frequency that we're working with. First thing that I noticed when I looked at the astrology of August 2023 was that we have two full moons this month. Okay, the first is on August 1st in the sign of Aquarius, and then the the, the second one is on August 30, August 30th in Pisces. Okay, and so these are absolutely framing the entire month with this full moon energy. And as you're probably aware that we are kind of exiting the age of Pisces, moving into the age of Aquarius. And lo and behold, those are these two energies that we're working with right here. Um, there's almost a retrograde aspect, right, of this from kind of moving from Aquarius back into Pisces. I think that's really relevant. But the other thing about this is all this full moon energy, what does the full moon do? It illuminates and, and brings things to light so that we can clear things out. It's also a, a releasing kind of, um, it, it assists in releasing. So we're looking at August as potentially being uh, an incredibly powerful month for facing the shadow, right? For really looking at, um, you know, whatever it is that's been hidden and bringing it up into light and then clearing out whatever that, right, is, is not serving us anymore, okay? And think back to the Akashic message right? Um, sword, right? Steel blade. That's why I put Michael behind me here, because we may be needing a lot of that cutting energy, right? Of, of clearing, of cutting of that which is not serving us, that which is not of the light, okay? And then in addition to that powerful full moon, full moon energy, there's a lot of energy from that incredible month that we're just leaving of July 2023, um, it, that is going to be carrying over or that initiated in July that's going to be carrying over into August. And um, the, one of these is that the North Node just went into Aries on July 17th, okay? And the North Node of the Moon is what represents our our karmic future, right? With the lessons that we're learning right now, with the karma that we're working through. And so that is going to be really prevalent um, in, in, in August, I feel, because of this sign of Aries. Again, August being that first month of the, the galactic year, it has that almost Aries overtone of energy, even though we're in Leo. North Node in Aries speaks a lot to the energy of finding one's own individual self and finding one's own individual voice. Do you sense a resonance here with the white overtone wizard, right? Um, and then in, in a conjunction with that, on July 23rd, Chiron, the wounded healer, just went retrograde also in Aries, okay? So really strong Aries energy this month. And remember that Aries was the god of war, all right? So we have a lot of kind of a potential conflict that could come up in August. Now, that's not necessarily bad, okay? Um, because if something hasn't been resolved and it's been kind of underground for a long time, sometimes when we bring it up, it's, it's going to create conflict, right? And if you've been through an awakening process where you haven't been true to yourself and all of a sudden you're you're starting to do things that are more aligned with you and you're going to find that there's going to be people that get upset about it, that's the kind of conflict that we're talking about. That This could be on a massive, massive scale. It could be on a very collective scale. And so there could be a lot of conflict, a lot of polarity, which we already know we have, right? But it could be coming to a head or really flaring up in August. Um, but but Chiron really also is one that encourages us or to assist us in bringing up the old wounds, right? So we could be looking at 
um, it, it, you know, bringing up old wounds or bringing up festering wounds in society or within your own self and having to come face to face. Now, we always have the choice. We can come face to face with it or we can uh, deal with it in other ways. Uh, the suggestion here is to come face to face with it. OK, um, and then finally, the the, the last energy that initiated in July that's moving through and it's going to be really strong in August is the Lion's Gate portal. Okay. And I will be doing another video on the Lion's Gate, but very briefly, Lion's Gate is a really um, powerful energy portal that happens every year around this time. It's this incredible influx of light codes. And often I find it, it kind of initiates whatever um, whatever karmic struggles are going to be going through in the, the year ahead. All right. And so we went into the Lionsgate started on, on, I believe, July 28th. And that year in the era, that day and the galactic calendar, surprise, surprise, it was the yellow resonant warrior. All right. So uh, here again, we've got warrior energy here. Um, it's also a galactic activation portal day that initiated this whole Lionsgate this year. This is going to be an incredibly powerful Lionsgate, I feel. That energy is going to peak around August 8th, and it's going to be open through at least August 12th. So at least the very first couple of weeks of August is going to be very, very full of this Lionsgate energy. And then later on in the month, that may start to kind of it feels like that might be the building up or the initiating and we may start to see those things those energies starting to take effect starting mid-month and into september october okay with that said i'm going to go back to the akashic messages okay and then we're going to look at, at the spirit animal that's coming forward for this month because that's super powerful too and it really is going to shed a lot of light on everything that we've covered so far so i asked what is the positive expression of this energy of August 2023, this sword energy, this warrior energy, okay? And the answer was that the positive expression of this is the gathering power of humanity to not only awaken and mass, to be, but to begin to make choices and act in alignment with their clarified vision. People are starting to realize that they are not alone. People are starting to discern and recognize truth, and people are starting to organize and work together for the protection of the heart of humanity. The forces of light are assembling, okay? So that's the positive forces of light assembling, people recognizing they're not alone. And this is interesting because this came through for me about a week before the alien disclosure, but that recognition that we're not alone, I feel like that's part of it. Okay, so then I asked, what's the negative expression of these energies? And they said, an amplification of existing patterns of delusion and illusion. Tongues that cut. Cutting down of reputations. Eating of the buds before they bloom. An upwelling of fanaticism. A complete rejection of logical reality. Paranoia. Waves of emotional energy, fear and anger sweeping over the land, people losing their minds, people pledging themselves to serve the dark. Okay, so and finally, they said people are choosing sides. One must dedicate oneself to serve. Are you going to serve the light? Or are you going to serve the dark? All right. So first of all, I want to say that these are potentials. Okay. And that, as you notice, there's positive and negative polarities of this. And that's one thing that we really need to keep in mind, remembering that overtone energy of radiating from the heart. The more we can stay in the heart, the more we're going to bring in the positive polarity of these energies. Okay. But just to, I just want to go over a couple things here. Um, and the positive side, awakening by making choices and acting in alignment with your clarified vision. Okay. And the negative, a rejection of logical reality. So I feel like a big part of this energy that also relates to the spirit animal that's coming forward is going to be using logic and being able to be objective. Okay. Um, and also feeling into the vibration. So let's look at that spirit animal. And the one that really is coming forward strongly this month is spider. Okay. And so 
Spider is an incredibly powerful totem, and it's connected directly with the ancient powers of creation, okay? And we're going to look at some of this dark and light side of spider and how it relates to everything that we've spoken about so far. But first, I want to just say that it's dark side. This dark side of spider is about as dark as it gets. Negative spider energy embodies the deepest horrors imaginable to humanity. If you think about some of our favorite fantasy novels, uh, The Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, right? Often there's this spider character that's just really, it just makes chills run up and down your spine, right? Um, and so that's that's negative spider energy. It's vampiric. Okay, and what spider does is it creates traps and it waits for you to fall into it through not being aware, right? You have to be very aware when there's spider energy around. Anytime that you're a little bit unaware, you are going risk falling into these traps. Okay, so this is talking about manipulation. And in real life, this can be anything from like kind of guilt trips or, or relational traps, right, to legal traps, like a lot of legal language or some of the um, the, the, the legal uh, ensnarement that has happened over the last couple of hundred years is, is really, really significant. But positive spider energy is actually even stronger, right? Because it's literally about divine oneness, interconnection, beauty, and creative power, okay? Spider represents the cosmos and the creative power of the cosmos which is the life force energy right so spider represents this kind of feminine energy that brings forth right that brings forth the uh, the life wave okay um the negative spider is like the dark mother and is just incredibly incredibly dark <laughs> right and powerful so what i've been recently shown about spider is that initiations by this totem, and we're all going through these, um, can be incredibly rigorous, okay? So spider energy right now is rampant throughout the world. She has woven her web. Literally, you think of the World Wide Web, that's part of spider energy, okay? And, and so it's it's just all over the world, right? It, the, you can think of the world as covered with spider webs at this point. Um, but realize this 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 energy of spider is here to initiate us and to test us and we're not guaranteed to pass the test but it's really here to through the testing to initiate us to a higher level of consciousness okay so spider demands that we cut through illusion and come to grips with truth okay and spider forces us to realize that darkness and evil do exist and, and by exist, I mean they have been invited in and or tolerated, right, in the universe, including within us. So when we're dealing with spider energy, it's asking us to face the truth squarely, to be very, very objective, right? We're dealing with actual objective reality versus fantasy, okay? So we need to face the truth squarely, even those aspects of reality that make us want to scream, run away in horror, and hide our heads very deep in the sand. And that includes aspects of ourselves as well as things happening in the world. Okay? I saw a little video the other day. It was in Congress, and they one, one representative wanted to show a video to kind of back up what they were saying. And then the opposition even though the video was coming out of the mouths of, of somebody that they actually supported, the opposition walked out because they didn't want to hear the truth. Okay, so this is the kind of thing that we're going to be dealing with in this month of August and maybe coming to a head. All right, so um, the more we hide our eyes and refuse to see, the deeper we get entangled in the web of darkness, right? If we're dealing with dark energy and the more tightly she binds us and she doesn't stop because the deeper you go into it, the tighter she holds you until she sucks you completely dry of everything, including your very humanity. The thing is though, if you thrash around and lose your head in the spider energy, you get more and more entangled. So just fighting 
you know, just going, oh, berserk warrior does not work, right? What has to happen is to keep one's head. Think of Bilbo Baggins in The Lord of the Rings who kept his head. He kept out of the snare. He had his, was able to draw his sword and cut everybody free, okay? That's the kind of energy we need to be stepping into at this time, okay? So one thing that I was shown about using spider energy positively what I've been shown is the way to transmute this energy to light and access the true light power of spider is to be found at the intersection between truth and love. Okay, that's the sword that will cut away the negative spider energy and allow you to access the immense power of the positive side. Okay, and by the way, you know, this cross symbol also is this symbol for the sun, right? A, a, a cross within a circle. And it's a symbol for the center. It's the medicine wheel, right? It's it's coming to center. It's coming to the heart of things. And the heart is the portal through which we can pass in order to access the positive energy of spider and become divine creators, right, of our own world. So finding truth entails, again, to looking at the world objectively and using, using the power of your logical mind to overcome subjective emotional reactions and to assess the world dispassionately, right? All of the great teachers talk about being able to come into this space of dispassionate observation. And um, that's what it's really going to call for, okay? But finding the truth isn't just enough because it's possible to look at things really objectively and not be in the heart. And, and that... If you do that, if you're just working with objective reality without the heart, you knowingly or not are going to become an agent of the dark. Okay, so it's imperative to work with that heart. Okay, stay in the heart and bring the love frequency into it. However, love alone is not enough, right? Love alone is not enough because if you can't stay objective, if you're just in the heart, and you're not objective and you don't realize what's going on, it, you're going to be ensnared. You're going to be just falling right and left into uh, spider webs, into cobwebs. If you insist on clinging to your subjective opinions without taking a, a objective reality into account, you can end up diverting love into illusion, which perverts your love and turns your attempts to love into something twisted that will eventually cause harm to you and others. This is the false light energy, okay? It's rampant right now, okay? It's really, really all over the place. Um, especially, you know, that overblown feeling of compassion. Watch for, watch for victim mentality. Watch for the energy of victimization. You have to really look at things objectively and listen to people's words. And there's a, a big energy right now of so-called compassion, right? Compassion on the outside, but it's all victim on the inside. And that is very much spider energy. It sucks you dry. All right. So you have to both seek truth relentlessly and learn to operate from the heart. It's not an easy feat, but those who are diligent in this pursuit will become unstoppable healers. That is what we need more than anything else in this world. So with that said, um, for all those healers out there who are working with heart energy, I'm going to pull a card from, um, this is one of my favorite decks. It's the Shaman Wisdom Cards. It's by Lyda Richardson. Um, I have never been able to really find anything about her online aside from this deck of cards, but it's a fantastic deck. And so we'll pull a card from this deck. It uses, um, I think, largely Native American symbols and archetypes. And we're going to ask for clarity and ask for energetic support to assist us as warriors of the light, right? To hold our space, to have the courage and the strength to hold our ground. A lot of this is about holding one's ground. Remember, there's so much right now about the individual finding your eye and speaking the truth, being the truth, living the truth, okay? 
meaning that there's not going to be room anymore for living a lie. Okay, so this, uh, on a personal level, this month of August 2023 could be bringing forth a lot of, a lot of personal conflict, and ultimately, the encouragement is to have the strength and the courage to cut away whatever is 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 entangling you and paralyzing you and holding you back from your real purpose and doing or being you know what you're here to be and so that's where it's going to be really a matter of facing your own shadow acknowledging whatever wounding is there bringing healing and light to that wounding and then stepping forth cutting away the things that are binding you all right so i'm going to draw a card assisting us in that this card is the herb it's an herb mint okay um number 29 mint it's interesting because I've just been harvesting a whole lot of mint family. I filled, I filled my dehydrator today with mint family um, herbs, and especially uh, there was chocolate mint and spearmint and, and several, several other things in there that were really aromatic. So working with the energy of mint, it's very clear. It helps to clear the mind. It can help to kind of clear out congestion from the body. Um, it, it's an energizing herb. And so just calling on the spirit of mint, um, having a mint smoothie, putting mint in your water and, you know, in these hot days um, or maybe a mint iced tea, something like that could be very supportive on a physical level. Um, the the uh, essential oils could be really, really helpful to, to maintain a clear mind and to help you because uh, mint is a sharp kind of um, energy, right, to help you to um make those clear sharp decisions even the ones that are difficult right um be careful of tongues that cut however remember that um that uh cutting people down is actually always a red flag right um and so we want to always stay in the heart and be compassionate by the way there's so many narratives out there and many of the narratives uh, that you're going to see in August may involve dissing people, right? And so here is a suggestion just to practice, to get into when you see somebody vilified in the news, on social media, in gossip circles, when you see that vilification happening, look deeper, okay? Because that becomes, you know, that, that can be part of the narrative. Um, don't be like, jumping on the bandwagon bandwagon and and you know dissing people if you don't know all the facts so if you hear like sound bites is one real huge way that this is done a person is quoted out of context and then it it ricochets all over the internet that this person said this and they're a horrible person and look deeper okay if if you see something and it's triggering you know it's flaring up anger realize that a lot of these narratives of the dark or the false light are designed to trigger your emotions and especially fear, hate, anger, that kind of thing. Okay. And so one way to cut through that is again, the objective reality. If you notice yourself feeling these things as a response to something that you've seen online, do your research. Okay. Look at, if it's a quote, look at the quote in context and not just in context of what the person said, but the whole history behind it challenging it takes some time right and uh, but that is one thing that we are being encouraged to do with this white overtone wizard is to take back time take back time that means take your time with things you know even though there may be some hard decisions to make calm in your heart because the heart will allow you to have the time to go through these things in a way that helps you to integrate right that that brings things into light it's so imperative right now to keep our heads and stay in the heart okay head heart that's that beautiful energy of centeredness of groundness groundedness that's where you find your you find your divine center if you can center in both right head and heart and keep your calm keep your cool Right, call on the energy of mint to keep cool and don't 
back down. If this message has resonated with you, if you feel like there's something important here that you feel uh, um, others could benefit from, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts below. And always remember you were born to be free.